What is up people, Fire here from AwesomeDudes.com and before you start with this video, just quickly, I wanted to tell you that you can go on my website here, AwesomeDudes.com and then you can go under download free assets and there you can download free assets. Now these are commercial free assets, they are not assets for this tutorial. The assets for this tutorial, this dark cave, you can find, link is in the description below so you can get them from that link. But these are other commercial free assets that you can use to develop your own games and you have 3D assets, 2D assets, backgrounds and whatnot and I keep adding new and new stuff. So you should definitely check this out and yeah, enjoy the video. So far, we have our game up and running. Now, what I want to do now before we continue is I want to make the camera follow the player. And for that, we're going to go here in our scripts and here I'm going to right click and I'm going to create camera script. And also in our player scripts, we need to create one more script. And that script is going to be called player score. So here I'm going to say player score and attach it on the player and we need to do this before we create the camera follow script. So I'm gonna open the player score script, let me just tag it right here, class like this and give a little bit of space so that we can see what we are gonna do here. Let me go on top and in our player score script we're only gonna add variables or one variable which is gonna be public boolean, so public bool is alive. This variable is going to determine if the player is alive or not. When we collide with the skeleton we are going to kill the player so on and so forth and here in the awake function we are going to say is alive is equal to true. That is it for now. We are going to tweak the settings of our player script later on when we add the score but this at the moment is essential in order for us to create the camera follow script. Because when we go now in our Unity editor and go back here in scripts and camera script, I'm gonna right click and create a new C sharp script, which I'm gonna call camera follow. And we are gonna attach it on the main camera. So attach it on the main camera. I'm gonna double click on it to open it here. And the same process, I'm gonna repeat, tag the class like this and hold enter to give a little bit of space and what we are going to do in our camera follow script is that we are going to have a private game object and a game object is anything that we have in the scene. So anything, our camera is a game object, our background is a game object, our player, our skeleton, everything is a game object. That is the base class for everything else. So what we are going to do here is that we have a private game object which I'm going to call player which as you can assume we are going to get the player from the scene and also we have a private player score script which is going to be player score which is the name of that script. And as you can assume we are going to get the player from the scene. Now how can we do that? Well we have something called game object find. So I can say here player is equal to game object dot find and here inside of it I'm going to say player inside of quotes. Now what does this mean? Well, this means that we are going to go in a scene. This game object is a class that is available to us from Unity Engine. So the game object is going to go inside of the scene and it is going to search for a game object that has a name called player. And if I go in the Unity editor and select the player here in the hierarchy, you see that we change his name to player. So it is going to locate the player and it's going to get that game object. So now that we have the player's game object, we can simply say player score. So player score is equal to player dot get component and we are going to get the player score script from it. Now, why can we just say get component like this? Well, because we did not attach the player score script on the camera itself. We can only use get component when we want to get a component that is attached on that particular game object. But since our script is attached here on the player as you can see, then we need to, well, first get a reference to our player and then we need to get the component from him. So now what we are going to do is we are going to create the follow function which is well going to enable us to follow the player. So I'm going to say here private void follow player or follow the player. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if player score that is alive. 
So if our player is alive, we are going to follow him. Otherwise, we are not. And we are going to call this function in the update function. So if the player is alive, we are going to follow him. Otherwise, we are not going to follow the player. So here I'm going to say vector3 temp is equal to transform that position. So we're getting our own position. And I'm going to say temp.x is equal to player dot transform that position dot x. So we're getting the position x from the player. And here we are going to say temp dot y is equal to player dot transform that position dot y. And the last thing we're simply going to say transform that position is equal to temp. We are going to tweak this a little bit and I'm going to show you why in a second. But before we do that, I'm simply going to run the game and I'm going to remove the skeleton because we don't want the skeleton to obscure us. So when I run the game, notice the camera is following the player. Notice the camera is following the player. Even when we jump, the camera is following the player. Now, I do not want it to follow like this. I do not want the camera to see this much of the ground that we are standing on. How can we fix it? Well, we can simply go back in our script and here where we are adding or setting the camera's Y to be equal to player's Y, I can say here, for example, plus two F, which will move the camera a little bit up. Notice when I run the game now, it is going to be a little bit upwards. Notice we don't see that much of our ground, but we still see enough, which is, well, okay. Also, I want the camera, notice, I don't want to go here and now we see the empty space of our game. So I do not want that. How can we fix it? Well, for that, we can create two variables. I can go here, so here, and I can create two variables, which I'm going to call private float, and they are going to be min x, which is equal to zero, and max x, which is equal to zero at the moment. What we want to do here is we want to set the minimum X and the maximum X. The minimum can be zero because we don't want the camera to go less than the zero position. But the maximum X is going to be somewhere around here. So let's say somewhere around here, which is 96, let's say 90. So 90 is going to be the position for the maximum. So if I go back here and I set 90 for the maximum, we do need to go here and we need to check. So if our temp.x is less than the minimum x, so if temp x, which is this one right here that we are setting to be equal to player's position, if it's less than the minimum x, then temp.x, so temp x is equal to the minimum x. And also if temp dot x is greater than the maximum x so we are if we are going above the maximum then temp dot x is equal to our maximum x position so now we will not follow the player if our player's position is less than zero notice now we are not following the player notice the camera is not following the player but when we move from the zero as we did here the camera is following the player but when player's position x is less than zero the camera is standing still. So see, but when we jump, the camera will follow the player. That is okay. But notice when we go here, left and right, the camera is not moving. When we try to go to the right side, the camera is moving again, as we just saw. So this is a nice feature to have and to know how to implement. This is how we are going to make our camera follow the player. And that is how we are going to progress in our game.